sexy jeans, fizzy drinks, and the most memorable diabetes spokesman to hit the small screen, these TV commercial actors might be gone, but they're definitely not forgotten. The forever face of Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Harlan David Sanders, who was not an actual military colonel, though granted the honorary title, was born in 1890, but it wasn't until 1930 that he'd get his start in the fried chicken business. His first attempt at a restaurant was the Harlan Sanders Cafe in Corbin, Kentucky, where he came up with his trademark secret recipe, and the rest is finger licking good history. But in the early 1960s, Colonel Sanders sold Kentucky Fried Chicken to two Kentucky-based businessmen. Nevertheless, he still believed in his product and stayed on with the company as its official brand ambassador into the 1970s. Tragically, the Colonel died of leukemia on December 16, 1980, at age 90. Though his legacy lives on throughout KFC, even if the company's current standards don't live up to his own. Nowadays, there are countless actors who have played a fictionalized version of Colonel Sanders in KFC's subsequent ad campaign, complete with the trademark white shrimp. Hey, that's not the real Colonel Sanders. I'm the real Colonel Sanders. No doubt, Sanders' likeness lives on far beyond his death. Hoping to generate more male buyers, the cigarette company Marlboro began an advertisement campaign in 1955 that has long supported the brand. Capitalizing on the popularity and masculinity of the Western cowboy, Marlboro developed its own hero, the Marlboro Man, who was brought to life by a number of actors, though perhaps most notably by Robert Bob Norris. Cast because of his friendship with Western icon John Wayne, Norris played the smoking cowboy for over a decade before calling it quits, ending his tenure for an honorable reason. Turns out, Norris never smoked, and he didn't want his kids to either. So when his son asked why he starred in Marlboro commercials if he didn't want his children to smoke, Norris quit the very next day. Having learned from his father's example, Norris's son Bobby told an NBC News affiliate, there's no gray area between right and wrong. You do the right thing, even if it costs you. Having never smoked a day in his life, Norris continued cowboying until his death on November 3rd, 2019, at age 90. The former Marlboro man lived a very full life beyond the cigarette campaign, supporting the arts, philanthropic endeavors, and animal causes. Turns out, this cowboy was something of a hero after all. It's rare that an actor can take a fictional character and spread them beyond a single brand, but for a comic like Jim Varney, it was a piece of cake. In 1980, Varney teamed up with Nashville-based advertising agency Cardin & Cherry to create a character called Ernest whose popularity quickly exploded. Soon, Varney's Ernest became the face of Sprite, Czech cereals, and even Taco John's. As Ernest's popularity grew overnight, Varney became the star of a plethora of TV specials, feature films, and a short-lived TV series titled, Hey Vern, It's Ernest. Vern, I, I, I'm trapped in here with all this purity ice cream. Don't send help. Know what I mean? Sure, Varney was known for other movie and TV roles too, like voicing Slinky Dog in the first two Toy Story movies. But Ernest stood in a category all in his own. Unfortunately, as an active chain smoker, Varney developed an aggressive lung cancer in the late 90s that soon ended his budding career. In 2022, Varney's nephew Justin Lloyd noted he really didn't want anybody to really know how sick he was. It wasn't long before Varney died on February 10, 2000, at age 50. Nevertheless, Ernest remains one of the most popular characters to be born of an ad campaign and one with an extensive legacy. Born William Darrell Mays Jr., this infomercial king, as he was often called, was best known as Billy Mays of OxyClean fame. Known for his boisterous personality and convincing sales tactics, Mays started at the Home Shopping Network before landing the OxyClean campaign at the turn of the century. Called a full-volume pitchman, amped up like a candidate for a tranquilizer gun takedown by the Washington Post, there's no doubt that Mays made a significant impact on his field and was often imitated, parodied, and praised. But wait, there's more! Mays also starred along Anthony Sullivan on the Discovery Channel docuseries Pitchman, which followed the TV salesmen as they pushed different products in each episode. Unfortunately, the show didn't last long as Mays died on June 28, 2009, at age 50, though initial reports claimed that drug abuse was involved. A later autopsy denied those allegations, citing heart disease as the leading factor. In honor of Mays, many of his unaired commercials were shown following the news of his death, and Pitchman even aired a special Billy Mays tribute in July 2009. 
Jeffrey Holder might be most notable for his role as the villainous Baron Somdi in the James Bond thriller Live and Let Die, but he was also the pushman for 7up for a time, reminding audiences everywhere that 7up has no artificial coloring or flavors, and never will. Holder's face became synonymous with the brand during the 1970s and 80s. Throughout the Uncola campaign, Holder's sensual charm and distinctive chuckle were trademarks for the brand, which only served as a publicity boost for the rising star. But Holder's career was much larger than his contributions to the soft drink industry. The actor won two Tony Awards as a director and costume designer for the original 1975 Broadway production of The Wiz, an all-black soul interpretation of The Wizard of Oz. No matter what role he was undertaking, he always put in the work to make it right. Back in 1975, he told People Magazine, I'm no snob. The commercial is an art form unto itself. After all, you are seducing people. No doubt, he certainly knew how to sell a product. However, even a talent such as Holder can't live forever. Due to a complication involving pneumonia, the multi-talented artist died on October 5, 2014, at age 84. Speaking of actors known for much more than their work on television commercials, Paul Winchell was one of the most accomplished ventriloquists, comedians, and actors of the 20th century. The voice of Winnie the Pooh character Tigger, Hanna-Barbera's Dick Dastardly, and Gargamel from the Smurfs? Winchell's voice talents were exceptional, and that's not even acknowledging his live-action work. But for our purposes, Winchell is known for having also voiced the trademark cap-wearing Mr. Owl in the original Tootsie Roll Pop commercials. Mr. Owl! How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? A good question. Let's find out. Though there is still some real debate on how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop, we will always remember the animated bird that first gave it a shot. Winchell died of natural causes on June 24, 2005, at the age of 82, survived by his wife, children, and grandchildren. The following day, his estranged daughter April Winchell shared, My father was a very troubled and unhappy man. If there is another place after this one, it is my hope that he now has the peace that eluded him on earth. Today, advertisements for jeans are usually pretty silly, but back in the mid-1980s, Levi's commercials were meant to be stylish, sleek, and above all, sexy. That's where model, singer, and soon-to-be TV commercial star Nick Kamen came in. Kamen was cast by Levi Strauss & Company as their frontman for a series of commercials centered on branding their Levi's 501 originals as the most attractive set of denim jeans imaginable. No wonder this guy became a sex symbol. Originally born Ivor Neville Kamen, the Levi's brand ambassador was later noticed by Madonna, who had him record Each Time You Break My Heart, leading to his own musical career. After four studio albums, Damon dropped off the face of the musical earth. It wasn't until the 2020s that we heard from the pop star again, only to tragically catch wind of his death. Kamen died on May 4, 2021, after a long battle with bone marrow cancer. He was 59 years old. As reported by the Herald Scotland, Kamen once expressed, I guess because of the advert, people recognize me, and then it's hard then to be accepted as something else. Still, Kamen was thankful for the career he did have, even if his status as a pop star was relatively short-lived. Having been everything from an actor and stuntman to a ranch hand and a U.S. Marine, Wilfred Brimley is probably best known for his commercial work for Liberty Medical and his consistent advocacy for diabetes-related education. That's right, Brimley is the diabetes guy who always warmed our hearts whenever on screen. The same one John Goodman parodied on Saturday Night Live. Hi, I'm Wilfred Brimley and I've had <clears throat> diabetes for about 20 years. He was also the usual face of the Quaker Oats Company which felt on brand considering his stance against diabetes, and appeared in films such as The Thing, Cocoon, and The Firm. Brimley may have begun his on-screen career in Hollywood, but it was his advocacy later in life after his own diabetes diagnosis that made him a household name, or at least the guy you remember who says the word diabetes funny. In 2008, the American Diabetes Association honored him with a lifetime achievement to thank him for his commitment to destigmatizing the condition. On August 1st, 2020, Brimley died at the ripe old age of 85 due to complications from a kidney condition. Brimley's agent, Linda Binsky, told Entertainment Tonight following his death, Wilfred Brimley was a man you could trust. He said what he meant, and he meant what he said. He had a gruff exterior and a tender heart. 
It may surprise folks to learn that long before Dave Thomas was the founder of Wendy's, he first ran a number of KFC franchises, working very closely with its founder, Colonel Sanders. That's right, much of what Thomas learned about the fast food business, he learned from the Colonel. But Thomas's dream was always to own his own hamburger joint, and so in 1969, he opened Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. From there, Wendy's became one of the largest fast food chains in the world. Taking some cues from the KFC playbook, Thomas appeared in more than 800 Wendy's commercials, earning the Guinness World Record for longest-running television advertising campaign starring a company founder. Thomas might not be as recognizable as Colonel Sanders, but he certainly put in the hours to make it big. Sadly, Dave Thomas died on January 8, 2002, at age 69, of liver cancer, but not before founding the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption in 1992, hoping to make adoption more accessible for all. To this day, Thomas's daughter Melinda continues to support Wendy's, going by Wendy Thomas when playing the Burger Joint's official spokesperson. Generally known as a child star in the 1930s and 40s, Jane Withers eventually graduated to playing Josephine the Plumber, a cousin of sorts to Mr. Clean, who pushed the comic cleanser on television. For about a decade in the 1960s and 70s, Withers was instantly recognizable as Josephine, a role she landed the same year she earned her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. When she wasn't selling Comet to unsuspecting viewers, Withers had quite the career. Having gone from a child star opposite Shirley Temple to landing a role in Giant, she continued working into the 21st century with animated roles at Disney. Surrounded by loved ones, Withers died on August 7, 2021 at her home in Burbank at the age age of 95. Withers' daughter expressed afterward she lit up a room with her laughter, but she especially radiated joy and thankfulness when talking about the career she so loved and how lucky she was. Talk about a really special lady.